Okay, so that's the that's the theory stuff. Now I'm going to try to drill down a little bit more into you know sort of how and and what and stuff like that. Um, so we move forward. So just want to sort of just pe get people to understand sort of what we do and how we sort of um, you know do our work around the types and states. And so, so the way we approach it is is you know when we actually are designing the services, we're we're one of the first things we do is we create those entity diagrams, just like the one you saw for state itself. We, we create entity diagrams, and we sort of talk about them, and we talk about how they're related and whatnot. Well, one of the things that we, we, we do is we start throwing out types and sort of say, well, if this is an object, what are its types? And we start throwing out things like that. And we maybe sometimes document them on the diagram, sometimes we don't and whatnot. But it's not try, it, it just to, you know, to be exemplary of what we're, what we're thinking about. Um, but then once that, that entity diagram gets sort of frozen and it gets more solidified, and we actually start, then we create the, op, the operations around them and all that kind of stuff, and we start creating the contract, we then have to go back and say, oh, gosh, we have to put in the types and states somewhere. And so what we then do is often go back and look at example data. Um, anything that we can get from the A-team, any kind of, especially the data tells you more than anything else. But, you know, you can also read the um, the uh, you know, the process flow diagrams, if you actually look at some of the process flow diagrams from the original um, uh, artifacts that the A-team created over the past two years, um, you know, they, they had a lot of process flow diagrams, and that will also sort of just tell you, especially states, it will tell you, oh, well, this thing, this is now what's happening, this is now what's happening, and these things are not, and so you can sort of pick them out of that. Um, but then what we do is we, we post them up, you know, and we write them up, and we put them in the wiki, and when we put them in as types and states on the wiki and say, okay, these are some things that we think, and this sort of then we think will capture all of the distinctions that you know that the the A team the you know the is trying to capture you know when they when they're talking about things, um, and and then we have a meeting where we try to review it with them. Now, I, I think one of the things that's sort of fallen short is that even though we have had these reviews. Um, the, you know, they're, they're more sort of like, okay, can you rubber stamp these things sometimes? Um, not really, but I, I mean, it, it, it's hard for BAs to get their heads completely into the diagrams, and that's sort of one of the reasons why we're doing this training, and I'm going to be doing a similar training for the BAs uh, next week to try to sort of get it so they understand sort of more the process, so they can be more ownership of actually maybe even doing some of this, some of this work instead of just service team doing it. And again, we're trying to get out of being bo the bottleneck. Um, but then once they're approved, by you know the BAs, and we say, yeah, that's what we want to call them. That's the names. That's that's what people sort of will you know if they see that they'll go, yeah, we know what that is, pretty much. Um, and and there's some confusion because there you know a lot of schools call the same thing by different names, and we'll I'll show you some examples of that. Um, but then we take them and we actually translate them into artifacts that you guys can use um, in Gal. Um, the you know, and I'll talk about the the actual artifacts that we that we do. But then we finally, when we're all done with that, we'll say, okay. We're, we're, re we're releasing this contract, and we release all of these, and these are the all uh, approved official you know, types and states that, you know, that are known and are going to be released with, with the product. Um, uh, parallel development teams, like I said, can add more in, and then we'll, they'll, be, uh, they'll be released with the product too. But you know, this was just sort of our release and sort of saying these are the ones that we know about now and we think are the ones that are needed to probably capture most of the distinctions that you're going to be faced with um, during the parallel development. Um, I'm going to drill down more, more detailed on this. So this is just an example of um, the entity diagram from the appointment window, and I'm not going to try to describe the, the, the appointment, you know, this whole diagram here. But you can sort of see that we have appointment window, and we have appointment window type. And this is just our coloring scheme. The, the blue is like the main objects, and the, and the yellowish are the, obje uh, is the, are the types, type objects. The reds are, are objects that are related to this service, but they're not in this service. Um, and, and so we sort of didn't start listing sort of what we think might might be in those slots. Um, I mean, might be in those types. What what, is, what are we really talking about when we said appointment window? What are we really talking about? And you know, if you had a type of that, what would it what would it, what might it be? Um, and so what sort of fell out as we sort of started doing that in this particular case, you can sort of you know sort of see that that. Um, and this is also we'll get to looking at the data. Is sort of the, you get categorizations, and it basically is the, the type is really telling you for the window what kind of information about the rules 
that you might need to generate the actual slots. And this is, I can't show you, tell you, explain to you the whole thing, but that sort of drives a lot of that. Um, and then the slot type is sort of, well, is it, is, it a, is it closed or is it ended? Does it have an end date or not? And then, and, the, and these are just thoughts. We're just saying, is that that's sort of something we might do? And we put question marks, so you can even see, and it's right now still there. Um, you know, and then is it, or is it single or a recurring slot? Is it something that sort of happens periodically or something? And so we just put thoughts down like that. Um, we then try to confirm a lot of that by actually looking at the data. So in this particular thing, it was good. We actually had some good data that we were able to, to pull, pull through. Um, and so I want to just sort of show you this, and you can sort of see it. It's actually on this, this page here. Um, and so when I said you look at the data, when we looked at it, we sort of go, okay, are there certain kinds that, you know, certain, certain rows here that, um, where you put in some data and other ones you put in, you don't put in certain data. So you can sort of scroll out here and you go, yeah, this sort of top one here, this one that sort of talks about this, you know, fictional all-in-one day. It's not really completely fictional, it's, but it's, it's, uh, it was more an example just sort of show what's going on. Yeah, you start putting in all kinds of additional information that sort of governs how you create the slot. So I go, you know, those rows are probably naturally fall into, you know, one, cate you know, one, one grouping or one category of the thing. So they said they just sort of naturally fall out of it. And then you sort of can scroll down here and you can sort of see, oh, okay, and these, these ones sort of all fall into sort of another category. So at the very least, we knew we, you know, we say oh, there's got to be a, a type that distinguishes th between these, these two types of data. Um, this example is actually we're very lucky because we had this raw, raw data here, but at least it allowed you to, uh, allowed us to go through and start making some of, some of those distinctions um, in here. Um, so... Let me go back to whoops, the PowerPoint. So, <clears throat> so when we did that, we looked at the data, um, you know, plowed through it, put some ideas together, and put them in the uh, appointment service types in, in states page. So again, I'm just going to click on this, and we're going to bring us to the uh, to the appointment service types in states page. And this is actually the kind of you know stuff we put in. So we put in put in the key, you know, quality appointment window type, slotted uniform. You know, and then we have slotted with, with a maximum, and then we have uh, with a one slot, and this is manual. Um, and uh, this is the example where they came back, and we said, oh, we can just add in a manual, and we've got, a, we've got another process, which wasn't represented in that page. Um, and, there's, you know, we also sort of put in, put in one where we thought we had this idea of a non-slotted, you know, where you have a window that doesn't actually create a slot. Um, but we talked about it with, with the BAs, and we decided not, not to, not, that they didn't want that, that they actually wanted to actually create slots all the way through the, the at least one slot, and that's sort of the, what we did. Um, I think it's, it's important to note is, um, you know, when we put these things in, it has a lot of additional information than, than just is stored in the database right now because we, we capture the aliases. You know, we have, uh, you know, th this is sort of more like we had BAs were calling this, you know, maybe you know, automatically, or they call this, you know, what's, you know, it's a shared appointment slot that, ev that everybody's using it. Um, and then you sort of put in examples, if you could, of, of actual, you know, examples of types that actually would follow that, that category. Um, and then we try to keep this idea of this status and uh, agreed upon and whether it's, you know, uh, it's, it's been released or not. And there's actually been some confusion and we're going to try to rework this idea of, the, of, the, of what this status or agreed upon status means. But the idea was, you know, has it actually been, um, the, in my original mind, the word proposed meant that it's proposed for release w when we release enrollment. We need a finer grain distinction that we actually need proposed by the service team, agreed to by the BAs, and then whether it's actually been created in the art artifacts, um, which we weren't tracking and we still haven't started tracking. Um, but the key thing is, is that we did have, you know, you know, the status of this one is eliminated, and these ones were placeholders, and we just sort of struck them out because we're not really dealing with one. But they, uh, they were ideas to think about, well, maybe this is a type, but then you know, well, it's just a placeholder to make sure when we come back here, we might be able to discuss and say, oh, yeah, that is something we wanted to deal with. Um, so the aliases is really important to, to sort of, you know, to, to get everybody to sort of talk the same language and say, yeah, that's the way. But ultimately, we have to get everybody to agree to at least have, you know, agree to, to, to the string. This string is really the, the most important thing that we've got to get agreement on. Um, because an implementing institution can always go in and change the name and they can change the description, you know, when we actually put it into the system, um, you know, but, but we're going to be hard coding or coding against that, this string. And that's why it's really important to get that string nailed down and agreed upon and that it makes sure it makes all the, 
all of the distinctions that we we want it to. Um, let's see if we got that right. So that's. Um, let's see. Let me just go through. I, we also have states. In this one, it's pretty simple. It's really just active, and we don't even know if there's an inactive right now. So we put it in there, but we marked it out because we haven't heard anybody tell us that they're ever going to inactivate a window. They'll just delete the thing. Um, but you know, typically, you might we'll put something in, and we'll say at least it's active, and that would then, of course, be the the built-in one. So we have, um, and the way this works is that you know this sort of defines the the life cycle. That, that these states are attached to. It's sort of the way we're doing it in the wiki. So you would sort of do that kind of stuff. And this is, this is how you would read this. This is the life cycle key and then the description, and then this would be the list of states that would then be uh, associated with that life cycle. All right? Um, let me see. Anything else? Uh, I don't think on that right now. Let me see, get back to the PowerPoint. Um, so type in state. Convention. So you know this is out on the out on the wiki. You know in the service templates and conventions. Um, but so a couple things we're we're trying to follow to keep it consistent um, because especially in R1 it was wildly inconsistent as to what people named uh, types and states and everything. Um, and so we're trying to we're trying to get get some conventions so we aren't getting things mixed up and people know what to expect. Um, so first of all we wanted everything to be lowercase. And uh, so that that. That that's absolutely you know makes it a lot easier as and I think you know as a programmer if everything's just assumed to be in lowercase, um, but then I'm going to jump down to five. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of types that were defined in R1 where we didn't have that convention. So sort of a lot of the R1 services where we've already defined those things. Um, I I don't want to necessarily we decided not to go back and to say oh. Well, R1 was all bad. You know, we can't use them. We just sort of said, well, just use them as they are, um, list them, and you know, we'll, we'll deal with them as we, it, it, when and if we have time to sort of like maybe do a conversion on them. Um, the the second thing is is that the, the types and states need to be, you know, universal across all types. So you can't just you can't just make sure that your type is is unique to the kind of object you're talking about. So that so the main thing means that you sort of just embed the name of the object somehow in the in the type. So if it's about an ATP, then you, you know just whoops, then you put you know ATP in the string somewhere. Um, and you know generally it's Kawali type da da da. The other one is that you know we wanted to prefix all of them that are going to be released as formally released Kawali types and states that they would all start off with Kawali dot. And that way it's clear when somebody else gets a piece of code they know. That this type or state is really specific to USC or Berkeley or, or U, UMD or whatever. Um, it, in, in that way, you know, it may be possible, you know, and this is okay that an implementing institution may say, you know, this is a new type, and I, I'd, I'd like to call, call it start with quality because I think other people would use it. But you know, then in order to use that, they really should talk to the, a bunch of other schools to make sure it really makes sense. Um, but if they just want to sort of create something for one of their one-off uh, things. Just you know, prefix it with you know with their school and off and running, something like that. Um, you know, the other thing is sort of just a person looking at the key, they should be able to read it, and and it's not really readable to maybe a, a business user, but a programmer should be able to look. If that thing gets dumped out in the code, you know, the goal here is that you know in some dump, you should be able to sort of say, ah, this is a type key, this is a state key, this is the object it applies to. You know, and then th roughly what the heck it's talking about. Um, you know, if you always have to go back, if it's just a you know a, 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 a you know to some table and then look up all that information, it's just going to make things a nightmare because again, these things are going to be sprinkled throughout the code, and it's really important to make sure that that um, you know we have names and things that make sense. So, um, so I don't know why the whoops, I hit end. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. There we go. Um, okay, so now our next step, finally, to the programmer so you can actually do something with it. We actually have to now take those things and we have to turn them into Java constants so that you can programmatically reference them. Because we sort of want one of the rules is that the code shouldn't ever just sort of embed the string 
in there that we'd rather have it so that you know you reference the constant and then the constant is what you actually reference in your code and your actual you know rule or whatever if, if at all possible you know just it, it from a programming practice it's just a, it's a better way of doing things and then the other thing is is that these these types and states need to be turned into SQL insert statements so that they can actually um, you know so that they can actually be stored in the database and when you say you ask the question give me the types you can get a list of them and stuff like that um, and so you know those are the two things that need need to happen um, <clears throat> and, and I'll go into a little more detail on each of those I just want to sort of pause because I, I know this is kind of thing that pops most people's minds and well what, constants that's like the you know so Java 1.2 or something like that you know what about using enums and um, but we actually did think about that it wasn't like we just sort of you know said ah you know forget it you know enums are final you can't add a new enum to the existing list without actually you know modifying that Java code so you can't extend an enum and then have a new enum that 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 extends that um, and, and that would imply that that this is a frozen list this is the you know fully enumerated list of types and states and as you know that's the exact opposite of what we were shooting for you know <laughs> we're really shooting for these are these the reason why we have these types and states is to make them make it so that you know, we can extend be used and be extensible and you know by implementing institutions um, and and so the, but the constants again are just way to you know to localize you know where the strings are in the code so God forbid we have to actually change that string because you know we, we found we, we did it wrong you know we only have to change it in one place we don't have to go through tons and tons of code to change it um, I'm going to run through just a little bit of history now because before we get to the SQL insert statements, uh, you got to understand where we where we are and where we're being because it's still a work in progress. Um, but I just want to go during R1 when we did curriculum management. I got to tell you, it was it it, it was really kind of crazy. Um, but first of all, they did things differently. Service the, the service team did things differently. Each individual object had its own sort of corresponding type object. So Clue had its LU type. I don't know why it wasn't a Clue type, but it's an LU type. Clue set had its, a Clue set type. ATP had an ATP type. Milestone had a milestone type, and they were all separate objects. And they all they all exist in the system. They had their own sort of um, you know life, and they and they had their own um, methods to get them, and they had their own database tables to store them in. So if you had to create a SQL insert statement, you had to create it for that individual table that was that you were actually trying to insert that type for. So there was no standardization because the names were a little bit different. The string, you know, the field names were a little bit different. I mean, it was just, ugh, it wasn't, wasn't good. The other thing that was a big change from, from R1 to now, and we haven't worked through all the issues of that, is that states weren't, didn't even have an object at all. They didn't have anything that sort of said, given this string that represented the state, what is the, you know, what is the description of that? What is the name of that? Um, and for internationalization, that's absolutely horrible, because what they did is they have the string active or inactive, and then they just take that. The, the current application in R1 takes that word active or inactive uh, on, a, on a course proposal or whatever, and it just displays it on the screen, because what else can it do? There's no lookup for it. There's no anything. So we said, well, no, there should be an, this, the states should be like types, and they have, should, should have their own object. That's what we did for course slice and when we started on R2. Um, but even worse, from a from a um, management standpoint, from a you know you know project manager standpoint, nobody nobody tried to manage or control them until very late in the game, and that was me because I, I was stuck with it. Somebody said, "Deal with this," um, and and so what we ended up with it was it was a mishmash of of of, uh, of types and states, no standardization about how they're built or how they're you know um, how they're where they're put and whatnot. They, the, there are constants files placed everywhere with the, throughout the code, with some duplicating the same the same types. Um, you know, because you know programmers know to use constants files, so they just, they said, well, there is none, so they just created one. And then somebody else would say, do the same thing because it wasn't in a central place and nobody knew where they were or how to find them or how to use them. Um, so R1 was kind of a mess when it came to types and states. Then during course slice. We, the service team, made it made a few changes to types and states. Like I said, is that you know states now have objects, um, and but we, and what we did is instead of each object, each you know instead of a, a each object having its corresponding type object, so clue set having clue set type and ATP having an ATP type object, 
We said, you know, these things are all the same thing. They all just, you know, it's sort of the key and the name and the description, and then maybe there's extra little bits of data, but it's really it's not that big a deal. So we made just, we, we, what we did is we said um, each service would have its own set of objects, um, with own type objects and its own state objects. And the services, each service that was, was deployed, um, in basically implemented, I say included, but we call them included, implemented the, these type and state operations. Um, uh, but they were being then being back, and this was really even kind of more messy, they were sometimes backed by, by an, uh, a table that existed just in that service. But then even developers were going, this is kind of crazy. And so they sort of said, well, let's just create one table and make it, make it work for all the services. Um, and, the, and, and, um, and so where, where to make these in SQL insert statements was kind of confusing because it's sort of like, well, is it in this table or is it in this table? Or is it in, and it was a little bit of, little bit of that and a little bit of this. Um, then the, the other thing was, you know how we were talking about there? I said that there was a, an issue with sort of understanding the boundary between workflow nodes and life cycle, state life cycles. So even during core slice, it wasn't clear. And so we as services were trying to model the idea of, a, of an initial state and a next happy state um, within the state service uh, because we were just were this, the state operations. Because we knew that that was a need. People needed to understand that. And, and what's happened since then, and now during, in this, during this initial PD, PDT, we found out that um, Maryland, yay, did a good job. They came up with a solution for being able to actually tie what, they, what we were trying to do there, which was to figure out what's required at the next you know, sort of node really was what they were after. What fields would be required to be filled in so I'd know what to fill in before I submit it to the next node was really an all a workflow thing. And they were able to tie the workflow in um, and get it done, and they did it as part of their R1.2 release. And so when we, when we saw that, we said, hallelujah, we can drop all our, uh, you know, the services trying to manage that because it didn't ever feel right there, but we didn't know what else to do. We're trying to meet, meet the needs. Um, but the other thing was we said, you know, all these types and states are all sort of the same across all services. So why don't we just have a single central service for types and states and just manage them all there with their own, with just one central table for all the types and one central table for all, all, all the states. And that's essentially what, what, we, what we went to, we're, we're going to now. Unfortunately, this central service wasn't ready yet during this initial PDT, and so we ended up doing this mock impl. Now, some of you people have maybe had some experience in that, but so we just, you have a mock impl of the, of the, uh, the type service, and people were then able, would have to, instead of doing SQL insert statements, they would have to edit you know, the, the mock impl, which actually just sort of returned values that were, were coded into it in the Java code. Um, but finally, in this next round, which we're hoping to get going before we release and everything, well, we, we do have the impls all done, so we could do all that. I mean, we can certainly, you know, have it all done. But we, we're also being even more ambitious, which we're not quite there yet, um, is that we're hoping to get some KRAD screens so that the BAs could actually do some of this entry themselves. So that maybe the developers and, 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 and uh, you know, in service team, we, all we have to worry about is the constants files. Um, but then there's still some issues if they actually enter, you know, enter these types and states, you know, via some sort of UI, you know, that's going to store it in that instance of the database. How do we actually get it back out and have it part of the general impacts and whatnot? Um, and how do we get the constants created off them and whatnot? Um, so we're not, we're not all the way there with doing that, but at least we're, we're, we're trying to move in that direction. So it's a lot easier to manage and maintain these, these types and states. And more importantly, I think it's really less the, the, the defining the types and states, but, uh, but more getting into the groups. So um, I'm just going to run real quickly into the Java constants. And the only thing I want to sort of point out is, is, I just clicked on that, is sort of, if you can see it, this is the example from the services branch, um, is that sort of every service then has a, a, um, a file called, you know, after the service with constants after it. And it's, you know, sort of published as part of that whole thing. And so the idea here is that we have one central place for all of the types and states to be defined as part of that. But I want to also sort of just point to you to, to this first part here. If you sort of, you know, this is also part of those constants file, which is the ref object URI that is used to identify which types belong to which object. So this is this ref object URI for appointment is really important because that's what actually drives um, when you start asking, you know, well, okay, give me the types that I can I can have for an appointment or an appointment window or an appointment slot. 
it's this string that you want to put in. And as you can sort of see, it's basically the namespace of the service plus you know the simple name of the appointment class. So, um, but basically, you know, it's just public simple stuff: public, static, final, string, blah 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 blah. You know, um, and you know, we just sort of put put the you know put the the um, you know the constant name in there and just sort of make it clear what we're doing. Um, let's see what else. Kill that. So it's the constants. SQL insert statements. I'm just going to show you the SQL insert statements again, and this is an example that's that's not fully valid because it's old, but it's the example from you know from from when the states were actually were tied much more complicatedly and they had more information with them. But basically, these are basically we put them in. It's in the SQL. You know, every everything has has a dot SQL a dash SQL project associated with it, and so you do, you need to be able to just put them in, and typically in the initial DB, and then you would put it in the reference data, and we would then put it in, you know, there would be a file which would have the types and states. Now, I think what we're going to be doing is there's just going to be one of these files, and all the types, and all the states, and there's going to be one for the types, and one for the states, and that's all we're going to have. Um, again, right now, the only examples I can find are ones where they're sort of spread out. So these are the only one, these are like the types and states for the ATP service. Um, and again, we're trying to consolidate all of that to make it so we, we have just one set of you know one consistent SQL insert statement structure um, for all the types and all the states. All right. Um, drop out of that, and we're running a little bit. We only got a few more minutes left, so I'm going to try to run real fast. Um, I just want to sort of point out that you know there is the type type service contract and the state service contract, um, and then here's also a link to the type service mock info if you if you want to talk about that. Um, Important to understand, well, when we finally get this going perfectly, the SQL statements are here with the, um, I mean, the actual database structure is, is, you know, you can look at the database model, and that's basically if you actually go to the, like, one of the contracts, I just, this is just sort of so you can sort of see how, where it is. You go to the entity diagram, and that's the logical model, and you can click on the more button here, and then you scroll down and you'll see the database ER diagram. And that's a that's a PDF, and it actually is that's the database model. That's the you know the physical database model. And then if you actually whoops, uh, I did it wrong. Quickly, 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 quickly. More. If you actually and, and this is the DDL statement, so you can actually see what the type table and the and the state table are looking look like. What are the fields associated with all those things? And these were created by the University of Maryland uh, data modelers that have been working with the team recently so um, let me see I'm not sure what what I've, what I've got left uh, I'll skip the recap of the methodology um, tips and tricks if you have a lot of types and states defined I, I for one don't like manually having to create constants files and whatnot um, and so I use this thing called Firefox table tools and it allows me to easily cut and paste you know tables from the wiki and then post it into a, a spreadsheet. And then basically what I do, and I'm just going to show you this, you don't have to do it. Once I get it into a, um, a spreadsheet, I use, and you can just see it's yellow, I use a formula. You can see the formula up here to actually create the, the, the type out of the, the, the actual constant and then the SQL insert statement. And that way A, I don't make any mistakes. Um, and if you have more, actually, you know, it says well, this is kind of stupid for one, but once I get the formula, I just cut and paste the formula too. But let's just say, give you an example of the instruction type. Well, where's where's one where there's a lot? I'm just like, there's got to be one there's a lot. Yeah. So I think this is out here. So you can see once you get it, then it's easier to sort of get get the process really, really fast in order to generate these things because you can just sort of cut and paste from the wiki, pop it in here, blah blah blah, and work on it. So um, it's now three o'clock. I'm not sure what, what to do here. I think we only scheduled an hour for this. Um, I've got just a few more slides. Do folks have a couple more minutes to just run through these last few? Yeah, I'm fine. Let's yeah, go for it. Try to, okay. try to wrap okay, it up. Okay, if anybody, if anybody has, to, has to drop off, then just go ahead. But I, I will work really, really quickly. Um, so, 
So that's how you define sort of the general, this is a list of all the types and this is a list of all the states. But there's another piece that's, that's sort of missing that, um, that, that I need to describe, which is the, 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 the groups and the type-type relations. Um, what, what, when we did services, what we realized was very often the type of one object will constrain by some business rule which types of another object it can be related to. So in order to enforce that constraint or define that constraint, we said, well, why don't we define type-type relations? And so there's, there's a table in, 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 that, in the type system, in the type service, that says, you know, that says this is, these are the, the allowed type-type relations. And so you could use this method that says, give me the allowed types for this type. So for example, give me the allowed you know, subterms or, or whatever um, for the, um, you know, the fall term. So you could, can, can, we could set it up in businesses, could, you know, schools could easily constrain, well, our, our fall term allows these kinds of subterms, you know, a first half and a second half. But our spring term, we also have this weird um, special spring break term. So you know, we have a you know, first half, second half, and a special bring, spring break term. And you could actually define all of those sort of constraint rules using the get allowed types for types. Um, it has the, the main one, which is get, get types for ref object URI, which says, for this kind of object, you know, give me all the types that might be valid for it. Uh, but then the last one is the more, the, the more generic one, which is get types for group type. And actually, that's a method we just added in. But basically, it it's, it's just sort of says, any way you want to group it, just use this special you know, relationship called grouping, and you know, uh, then use this method. And we'll get, we'll get the, if you put in this special group type, you'll get back um, you know, the, the, the other types that are part of that group. So, so then you know, how are they defined? And I'm just going to give you a, a, you know, a quick example here, just sort of, you know, um, you know, you the, uh, you define a type that identifies a group. You know, you just sort of create a new a new name, a new um, uh, type, and usually you put the word group in the middle of it somewhere, so it's clear that that's what it really is talking about. So it's a milestone type, but it's a grouping type because it really can't be used on a milestone. You can't really say this. You know, you can't take my key. You know, group key date and put it on there. It's actually a you know a key date is a name for a group of of actual milestone types, um, you know, like drop date and add date and whatnot. Um, and so this just allows you to define, you know, so that you can maybe code in your code something like key, this key date type, and then it'll reference all of the different, you know, it'll just pull in all the, all of the types that are co then configured against it. And again, it allows the, the, the implementing schools to manage, you know, the, the mappings there. Um, and so if you wanted to do that, you could sort of just, you know, put a new type in there called, you know, holiday is to Veterans Day or holiday to New Year's, New Year's Day. And the most important thing then is, of course, and this is where it's sort of, you know, we're getting sort of circular, is the type you need to use when you define the, the type type relation object, you need to say it's a group type. It's not you know, the allowed type, because um, that's, that, that's for the other method that you want to use. So you want to be able to say this is the group type. Uh, and then you sort of would, you would create it in the system or insert statement. Um, then my last page here is just because I promised to talk about the dictionary, but I can't actually show you anything. Um, but if R2 is, is anything like R1, you know, the dictionary ends up being chock full of these type strings um, because, again, these types and states are, are, um, you know, are central to sort of how people think about the object and what's valid on the objects and what's not valid and whatnot. And so what we, what we use is this, this cross-field constraint that sort of says, well, if this field is equal to x, then this other field must be equal to y, or it must be required, or it must, not, it must be null, or it must not be null, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and and the, the types and states just crop up all the time when you're trying, when you're trying to actually build them in. The, the truth was um, we don't have any examples written in yet that, that are using this cross-field constraint. And that's only because... KRAD hadn't put that in yet when I had time to do it, and I haven't had time to switch back and actually, you know, go back into dictionary. But um, I'm hoping we're going to do another training on dictionary, and I'll have some examples of cross-field constraints in there by that time. Um, and I think that's it. Thanks a lot, Norm. Looks good.
So there, there are a couple random um, questions and notes, and I, I think I'll try to just um, collect those and maybe put them into a list. And I, and I guess, um, Larry, the, if there are things that we need to discuss more formally, then you know, maybe you and I can touch base on that. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. 